Hello, hello. It's time for a fun little somewhat rapid fire pregnancy Q&A episode. So if you missed it, I talked about with my husband, Adam, how we're having a baby in August of this year. And that was episode 107. If you missed that one. And in this episode, I'm going to answer some of the questions you guys have asked me over the, I guess, like few weeks or few months since I first announced I was pregnant. So I'm recording this during my 17th week of pregnancy. You guys will hear the episode a little bit farther out than that, but I'm just going to answer some totally various fun questions about everything from like pregnancy symptoms, favorite parts of being pregnant, doulas, natural childbirth books, trying to conceive all sorts of stuff. And I hope you enjoy this episode and get something out of it. So here we go. Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth McCravey, a website designer and business coach for entrepreneurs and your host for the breakthrough brand podcast the show that's all about pulling back the curtain on how to actually build a successful business. I don't skim the surface around here. If you want a deep dive into the nitty gritty details of what it takes to run a successful business and stand out in a crowd, you're in the right place. After creating a multiple six figure a year website design business in my 20s, I'm ready to share everything I've learned and everything I'm still learning because I believe the keys to building a thriving business should never be a secret. Here you'll find episodes that are actionable, direct, and fun, like French chatting business over coffee and a fresh, honest take on the reality of being an entrepreneur. If you're ready to master online marketing, branding, website design, mindset, and business strategy, then this is the podcast for you. It's time to build your breakthrough brand. Let's do this. Okay, so I'm just going to dive right into this and just get straight into the first question. This is going to be a casual and fun conversation between the two of us, like we're just chatting over coffee about all things pregnancy. So the first question, what is the best pregnancy purchase I've made? So I have a blog with all my first trimester recommendations in it. I was reminded of how much I love blogging whenever I wrote that post. I was like, oh yeah, I don't blog much anymore. I just podcast. So that blog is very extensive, has a lot of links in it, and it only exists as a blog. So there's no podcast version of it, but it's elizabethmccravey.com slash first written out as a word dash trimester. And I'll link to that in the show notes um, with this episode. But there's all kinds of stuff that I purchased in that that I'm like totally recommending. And I'll do another one for the second trimester as well. But best purchase feels tough because I have bought a lot of stuff, if I'm being honest, and the timing of getting pregnant is part of it. Many of you might remember our house got robbed on Thanksgiving of 2020, which feels a very 2020 thing to happen. It really sucked and was scary and devastating and really just an odd robbery altogether. But my shoes and some of my clothing and all my jewelry were some of the main things that got stolen. And a lot of it was like my spring and summer clothes and shoes. So like I I was like, I might as well wait when that happened in the winter. I was like, I'll just wait till the new season comes to like replace all that. So I've started to replace some of those items, which has led me to feel like I'm buying a lot more stuff. But really, it's like I'm kind of starting at zero on some of this. Um, and I'm trying to buy stuff that's pregnancy friendly, which has been fun and like worked out well, I guess you could say. But I've been buying a lot of stuff. So anyway, but besides like for best purchase, besides the courses and books I bought, which are so helpful, and that's another question I'll get to a little ways down. I have loved the Promptly Journal and the Dear Baby Journal. So I'll link to those in the show notes. But let me tell you about them real quick. So Promptly, it goes literally through pregnancy all the way through your child's 18th birthday, which when I first heard that, I was like, I don't have the ability to keep up with that journaling wise, like it sounded like too much detail. But it's actually really cool because for pregnancy, it's literally just like one entry per trimester. And it has a lot of questions, like ask you a bunch of questions. There's a bunch of pages for you to just write random like milestones and notes and then a photo. So there's that for each trimester and there's some for birth. And then after that, there's one like main entry for each year of your child's life. And then you obviously would give it to them 
you know, later on, which I think is so special. So I really enjoyed that. And I bought it like at the end of my first trimester, which was perfect, because then I just started out by doing that whole like first trimester entry. And now I've been like, writing in the little notes section for the second trimester whenever I think of something important to add and then I'll answer the questions at the end of it. So anyway, I really love that one. It's really beautiful, nice keepsake. And then I have a journal called the Dear Baby Journal, which is a prayer journal where every week of your pregnancy, it gives you prompts for different things to pray for over your baby. And it gives you some scripture and kind of relating it back to like whatever milestones are happening that week. So it's just really cool. And Adam and I both have been like alternating writing prayers in it. So like I'll write some and then he's writing some. And again, another like really cool keepsake item that I think will be special to look back on. So those are probably my favorite pregnancy purchases. Okay, next question. Weirdest pregnancy symptoms so far? So two main ones have been especially weird. First is itching. So I've never been itchy as a person. I don't know. That's like a weird thing to say. I've never felt like I'm especially itchy, but I have been itchy, especially on my back and legs so much during this pregnancy. And it, that was like an early thing that started for me that still has not gone away. And I did recently read like for my week 17, like finally someone saying that was normal. But early on, I was like, why am I so itchy? And it feels like no amount of like lotion helps. So anyway, that's really weird and random and maybe TMI, but that's been one really weird thing that I did not know because no one have, I've never heard anyone talk about that one. And then the second one that I have heard people talk about is just the weirdest dream. So like, I have the craziest dreams. Like literally last night as I was falling asleep, I said to myself, I wonder what adventure I'll go on in my dreams tonight because it, they're all so wild. They feel extremely real. And I actually remember every single one of them when I wake up the next day, which is not normally how I feel like dreams have typically worked for me. So they've been really weird. A lot of them have been really sweet. A lot of them have been disturbing. Um, one like recurring sweet thing is that my dad has been in a lot of my dreams, which I got emotional like thinking about this earlier. I don't think I will now talking about it again. My dad passed away last year, if you did not know that, but he has been in a lot of these dreams, which has been so cool because I've had dreams of him like holding my baby, helping with our nursery and things like that, that obviously won't be happening, but are so special to me. Like even if just in a dream, oh, I'm getting emotional. So anyway, that's been a really fun one. And then I've had like on the more of the level of just like weird, a few nights ago, I had a dream that we were at our anatomy scan where you find out the gender and I found out I was having triplets and they were all boys. And I like lost my mind because I was like, I'm not prepared for triplets. And they were like, we don't know how we didn't catch this early on. And it felt so realistic. And yeah, that's been the weirdest ones, itching and weird dreams. Uh, next third question, favorite part of being pregnant. Um, first of all, I love being pregnant. If you can't tell by like my enthusiasm in this episode, I say that to myself almost daily. Like I'll say at some point in my head, I love being pregnant. And I feel like there's a stigma with pregnancy that we are not supposed to enjoy it as women. And I feel like I've almost been told that like subconsciously of like, it's really hard. It's not enjoyable. It's something we go through because we have to. And I know for some women, pregnancy really is hard or, or at the very least, like the first trimester can be absolutely awful. So if that's you, I totally get it. And I have so many friends who have um, had pregnancies that were more in that boat. But I feel like I've almost felt like I'm like waiting for it to be horrible and it hasn't been. And I'm really grateful for that. But also like, okay, I'm going to like let myself say that this is fun. So anyway, I've really enjoyed that. And my pregnancy has felt very like, I felt like myself most of the time and felt enjoyable. I have had some symptoms that feel uncomfortable. Um, I was not sharing just now the most uncomfortable ones. I was sharing the weirdest ones. I've had plenty that have been actually just truly uncomfortable. Um, but favorite things, I mean, two favorite ones. First one thing would be watching my belly grow. I just think that's so cool. And I'm like every day I'm like, oh, there's a little bit more of a bump here. And it's so funny looking back because I took, I had like Adam take bump photos of me early on at like, eight weeks and six weeks and stuff like that. And then eventually I was like, I just need to stop because I don't have a bump and it probably won't for a while. And now, so I took a long pause of like no photos and now I'm at 17 weeks. I really do feel like this week, like right now between like 17 and 18 is when I really have truly popped. And like before then it was like, okay, I kind of, there's kind of something there, but like I can easily hide it depending on what I'm wearing. And now it feels like, okay, it's starting to be a little something. And I'm sure 
um, by the end of this pregnancy, I'll be like, I can't believe I thought I was popping then because I'm sure I'll be much larger. But I've really enjoyed that of like watching that change and grow. And then my second favorite thing has been learning about birth and pregnancy. So like many of you know, if you've listened to this podcast for a while, because I've talked about this, but I love learning new things. I love researching and I like being informed. <laughs> um, it's the best way to say it, but I just really like learning. And so like I've enjoyed learning all that I possibly can about pregnancy and birth. And at some point I'll take that same interest and apply it to like how to actually take care of a baby. Cause I've not been learning about that yet, but like just yesterday on, I'm recording this on Monday. So yesterday was a Sunday and like in the afternoon I was watching a YouTube video on my iPad about pregnancy and Adam walked into the room and he was like, what are you watching? And I told him like another pregnancy video. Like this is like, that's like what I watch now. And he just pointed out how it's been funny to him watching my researcher nature. Like he calls it researcher Elizabeth or something like that it has been really coming out a lot during this pregnancy because it's just so fun to me. And I, I like being informed. I think I'm going to feel more confident and prepared for birth when I feel like I've learned a lot during this process. And I just think pregnancy and birth is like so fascinating and I've always been fascinated by it. And so now I've had like a reason to like get really into it, which has been fun. Okay, so fourth question, what do you think the gender is and are you finding out? So yes, we were finding out, I wanna know so bad. And at the timing that you guys hear this episode, if I air it, when I think we're going to air it, we will have just found out the gender like the day before, and we won't be sharing it immediately on social media, but we will at some point. But yeah, we are planning to find out in that anatomy scan ultrasound they do um, at like 20 weeks, and we're going to have the ultrasound tech. If they find out the first time, I've heard people have any like re redo the scan multiple times. So hopefully they find out the first time, but I'm going to have them write it down. And then we're going to look at it later together and maybe do like a special date night, like for finding out or something like that. Um, I think it's so cool when people wait all the way until birth to until the baby like literally comes out to know the gender. I've had friends do that, but I just don't think I could handle the anticipation because I don't love surprises and I like feeling prepared. I'm like really eager to know. So I've had a feeling it's a girl and I don't really know why they, that could, it could totally be a boy and I'm just completely wrong. And a lot of the like old sayings and like of ways to tell, um, whenever I read through those, they like point almost equally to me having either gender. So like, you know, I didn't have morning sickness, but like this other thing I have had or whatever. And so it's just, you know, you don't know. So who knows? And I'll be happy either way. I don't have a preference and neither does Adam. I would love to have one of each at some point, but I right now I'm just like, you know, I'll be happy either way. And I'm just grateful that we are having a baby and Adam doesn't even really have a guess. I'm more the one like constantly guessing. He's just kind of like, oh, we'll find out then. And that'll be great. And that's kind of his conclusion on it all. Okay, next question. Did you hire a doula? So we talked about this a little bit on the episode, I was saying 107, where we announced we were pregnant, but we did. And I'm so excited about it. Her name is Sarah. She's absolutely amazing. I did a lot of research before hiring her, but I actually only ever interviewed her. A lot of people will tell you that you want to interview a bunch of doulas. And I think that's great advice, but I just went with my gut. And I was like, she's the one, this is going to be great. Um, I had a meeting scheduled with another doula who I was going to be like meeting at a coffee shop to do like kind of an interview meetup with, but I, there were some like red flags to me about our email communication. I was like, I just don't know if this person's going to work out because of these things. Like it was just, I, I won't get into it here, but I was like, this is not my style. And so I was just like, oh, I'll cancel that one and find someone else. And then when I talked to Sarah, I could just tell that she would be really perfect for us and someone who I could be comfortable with. That's a huge key you want to look for with a doula, I think, um, that I've been told of like someone you're going to be comfortable with, someone your spouse or partner will also be comfortable with. And she reminds me a lot of Adam because before becoming a doula, she had a similar career path as him. She's also a believer, which I think is really cool because I do think my faith will become an important part of my birth. Uh, and she's really experienced. I feel like we vibe well together. So we've had one in-person meeting so far, and then she and I will text fairly often. So when I'm having, I have any kind of random question, I can text her and ask her, and that's really, really cool. So I, I so far would be like 100% recommend a doula, whether or not you're having a natural birth. Like I think it would be super helpful. Okay. Number six, favorite pregnancy books so far. So 
Two ones I'd recommend, the Mama Natural Week-by-Week Guide to Pregnancy and Childbirth. That is a mouthful, but it's seriously such a beautiful book. Definitely get the printed version, not the ebook, so you can like really look at the full spread of things. It tells you just what you need to know for each week of pregnancy. I have learned a lot from it. Uh, It is a natural childbirth book, but I think it would be perfect for anyone, like regardless of what type of birth you're planning to have. And Adam has also been reading it with me, which I think is helpful for him too. And then another one that I am almost done with, I think I have like one or two chapters left, but that's Ina May's Guide to Childbirth, which is like a classic, you could say. Um, I'm sure if you are someone who has had a natural birth, you've at least heard of this book. Um, It has a reputation as being really hippie, but I actually did not find it to be as hippie as people were saying, which maybe could mean I'm a little more hippie than I thought I was. I don't know, but I thought it was like just absolutely amazing, really informative and easy to read. And I actually have read it in reverse order. So I started with the second half, which is all the like information about birth uh, and pregnancy. And again, it's like super informative, but like easy to read. You can tell it's written by like a medical professional. She's a midwife, Uh, but it's also just like easy reading. And then I'm going back now and reading the birth stories, um, which is the whole first half of the book. So anyway, I would highly recommend those. And I have more stuff linked in that first trimester blog post too. Interrupting this episode with a suggestion for the small business owners listening. Ever wonder what you should do for healthcare when you and your spouse are both self-employed so there's no work-provided health insurance to participate in? Well, when my husband Adam joined me in the entrepreneurial job space over four years ago, we joined Christian Healthcare Ministries instead of getting traditional health insurance. And it was the best decision for us, especially in these years of growing and raising a family while also running multiple businesses. CHM is a health cost-sharing ministry and is a faith-based alternative to health insurance. We did tons of research before choosing CHM, and if you know me and Adam, you know we are all about doing the math when making big or small financial decisions. And even though it's not insurance, CHM shares 100% of eligible medical bills, which is more than the typical 70 or 80% of medical bills paid for by insurance companies. All sharing is determined by the CHM guidelines, which you can check out before and after joining. And for the mamas and mamas to be listening, you truly cannot find a better healthcare option for maternity care. I had a vaginal delivery and a C-section and birth center care and hospital care between my two pregnancies and births, and it was all 100% shared for. And outside of birth, we've had our share of emergency room visits and procedures as a family, and those costs were all shared by members at Christian Healthcare Ministries, leaving us only paying our monthly contribution. CHM is less expensive month-to-month than insurance, and because there's no network, you can choose your care with whichever providers best fit your family. I seriously just cannot recommend Christian Healthcare Ministries enough. You've got to check them out. Go to elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM for more information. Also putting that link in the show notes, elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM. Now back to the episode. Okay, so I've gotten this question a few times on Instagram. So did you read any books or do anything in particular that you think helped you conceive? Um, So, okay, I have a lot of thoughts on this. I've thought about doing a whole blog post or whole podcast episode, but I feel like I just don't know enough and do not want to like come across as if I think I know a lot because I want to say it from before I even answer this. I like don't know anything about any of this. So it's also a tough thing for me to answer because we did conceive quickly from when we had like decided to ourselves that we were trying officially and like praying about it and like thinking, okay, we are ready to have a baby. Like it happened that same week of getting pregnant, which again, I know is not everyone's story. And so I, and I don't know, like, I don't know if the stuff leading up to that helped or not, or if it was just always going to be quick for us. So anyway, I had been off birth control though, and not avoiding like getting pregnant and without giving like TMI details for about six months before this happened. So six months where we did not get pregnant, but also we're not like trying to, if that makes sense. Um, But things I think could have been helpful. I don't really know though, but here are some things that I was doing that I don't know, they could have been. I guess I might never know how helpful they were or not because I was doing these things before we were like officially trying and I was already thinking about like, okay, I want to get my body like ready to conceive whenever that decision time comes. Like I basically started thinking about that when we got off birth control, even though I knew like I'm not ready right this moment to try to have a baby. So 
First thing I read, not the whole book, but a lot of the book called Taking Charge of Your Fertility. I never finished it. I have, I own the ebook copy, um, and I definitely want to like revisit the book at some point and finish it. And I just think it's an amazing book. Great for all women, any age, just to like understand our bodies better because The biggest takeaway I have from that book is that with women, we are told you have a period and then here you go. And that's like it. And this book really dives into like understanding your body better. And so I just thought it was really cool um, for all women. And I learned a lot about conception from that book that I, I was almost like subtly learning about it through learning about other things. And anyway, it's a really great book. So I'd recommend that one. And that's really the only book for the part about books that I've gotten that question. So Other things, I'll link to all this in the show notes, but I was taking the Pink Stork Fertility Supplement. You can get it on Amazon. And I was taking it somewhat haphazardly. I only ever bought one bottle of it, which I think was only like a 30-day supply. But I had this from like maybe July all the way until um, we did conceive and I never finished the bottle of it. So anyway, I was taking it not that frequently. But Um, In November and December, which we got pregnant in December, I was like consistently taking it. So again, I don't know how helpful it was, but like, I love the company Pink Stork. I think they're amazing. And I love all their products for pregnancy too. And I have been using all of them like continuing from that. But yeah, I took that. And then I was taking a maca supplement, which is really great for reproductive health and for energy too. And I had been taking that like on and off for years, but had like started really consistently taking it um, again, probably like right before we ended up getting pregnant. And then I was already taking a prenatal from the time I went off the pill until I got pregnant. And I was actually taking like a really cheap gummy vitamin, which tasted so good. It's the Amazon brand prenatal gummy vitamins. So like they're really cheap. They taste absolutely delicious. I like still find myself like craving those gummies because they felt like candy to me. But I was taking those and I changed to like a nicer one once I got pregnant because I realized like that was the, a very synthetic form of all of those different types of vitamins. And so now I'm taking like a real whole foods prenatal. But anyway, I was taking that. So I was already like, I guess, preparing in a way. And then I also towards Right before we ended up getting pregnant, I was using ovulation test strips to track when I was ovulating. And you can like Google what all that is. I'll link to what I purchased in the show notes. Another thing I got on Amazon, but I was using those like trying to like understand my cycle and figuring out when ovulation happened, which I was not doing the whole time I was off the pill, but I had started like figuring that out really like probably two months before we ended up getting pregnant. So um, yeah, so those are some things I did. And again, I just, I don't know how helpful any of it was, but I would recommend all those products still regardless. So that's my answer to that question. Okay, I have four questions left. So number eight, how has working while you've been pregnant been? So I felt grateful to work from home. Um, I always feel grateful to work from home, but I've especially felt that way while being pregnant, like I'm able to wear the most comfortable clothes I want to. I can go lay on the couch for like five minutes. If I'm feeling achy, I can stand up or sit down, move rooms, like whatever I need to do, which has been so helpful. And again, like, I just feel super grateful for that. And uh, as far as the, like how work has been, I have a lot on my plate right now with my business. And so I have felt stressed at times, but I feel like I'm managing that well and like have been working diligently and planning. Well, I feel like I've planned, like I've never planned before. I have like my every single week, just going to make me sound a little crazy. I have every single week leading up to when I plan to start my maternity leave mapped out already with exactly what I need to work on that week which again, feels kind of crazy. Um, But I needed to do that because there's a lot of big things I'm trying to do this year. And I still like, you know, I'm not getting pregnant and having a baby and like abandoning all the other things I care about. Like my business is so important to me. And there's so much fun stuff. And I just literally love what I do so much. So one thing I've been working on really diligently is creating my course for designers. Um, You may know I did a beta launch of it in the end of February and have an amazing group of founding members. And then I'll be reopening the course again this summer. And so right now, like the founding members are getting to take the course as I complete each module, but I've been working diligently on like creating the course basically, which as you can imagine is like already a lot of work, but can also feel like maybe even more work when you're pregnant. But again, it's something I just, I really love. Like I love creating content. That's one of the reasons I love this podcast so much. 
But yeah, that's been the thing I'm working on. I'm also working on new templates, which is really fun and some other exciting things. So it's just a lot on my plate. Um, and the first trimester of pregnancy felt really intense with work because I was so tired. And it's funny because I actually didn't realize how tired I was until I hit the second trimester and started feeling myself have energy come back. And then I was like, wow, I was like tired than I even realized. I think I just got used to how tired I was. And it was just like, okay, this is just like the new me. And I like quit noticing it as much and was just learning how to deal with it. But then I started to have my energy come back. But I did that beta launch of my course during the first trimester at a time where I was very tired. Um, and I also did like a filming day with Show It for their creator series during that time. Um, did like podcast interviews, like all kinds of stuff. I had a lot going on and was also like feeling like I was falling asleep 24 seven. But overall, it's been good. And honestly, this might sound weird. But a lot of the time when I'm working, I forget that I'm pregnant, which is not like in a I don't mean that in a bad way at all. I'm like so excited about it, as you can tell from this whole episode. But I just am not thinking about it. Like I'm just focused on what I'm doing, what's right in front of me and working and having fun working. And I'm just like not thinking about it. It's like I can kind of go into like, okay, right now I'm working. And then like, you know, yesterday was Sunday and I didn't work all weekend. And on Sunday, I spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos of people's birth stories. And then, um, you know, went on a walk with a friend, went to church and like did other stuff that was not work related. So I can kind of like turn on and off between the different things. Okay, question nine. I got this one a lot too. How are you preparing for a natural childbirth? So if you missed it, I we talked about this again in episode 107. I'm planning to give birth at a birth center here in Nashville. And I want to have an unmade medic unmedicated natural birth. That was, that was a tongue twister for me. And I feel really excited about it. And I have done a ton of research. And after that research, and also just trusting my intuition, I've decided that's how I desire for my birth to go if that's possible. And I no things happen. I know emergencies happen. And I'm also trying to like mentally prepare for that reality as well, because I think that's important. And I still know the birth of this baby will be so awesome and a special experience, even if it were to feel different than what I'm currently like hoping it'll be. So I'm very accepting of that. Um, just wanted to put that out there. But yeah, I've been doing a lot to prepare though. <laughs> um, so one thing I've already mentioned is researching and learning a lot about birth. I still feel like I don't know that much, even with like all that I've read, but I want to. I really want to get familiar with specifically like how labor works and like the different ways that can go in the different stages, because that's something I still don't feel like I really understand. But I want to like know what to expect in order to feel more in control of what's happening. Not that I can control it, but like I want to be a participating in the experience versus it being like my body is doing this thing and these people are doing these things to me at this birth center and I don't really know what's happening. I want to feel like present and in control. So I'm taking two courses on birth. I'm taking a hypnobirthing course from the Positive Birth Company. And I'm also taking the Mama Natural birth course, like natural birth course, who she also wrote the week by week book I'm reading. And I link to those and explain both of those completely of like why I'm taking them, what they're about. If you're like, what the heck is hypnobirthing? Go read my first trimester blog post because I talk about it there. But that's something I've been doing. And Adam is taking those with me as well. And we're not that far into them yet. I'm pretty far into the hypnobirthing one. And I've been taking that one alone so far because most of it so far has not been about birth, but more of like preparing for it. But I do want Adam to like watch some of the later videos with me. And then the Mama Natural course, I watched the first two like videos on my own. And then the other night we watched one together. And then now that course is actually about to get into like the stuff I'm really eager to learn, like about labor and delivery and all of that. So that'll be really good. Other things I've been doing to prepare, I already kind of mentioned this, but I'm watching a lot of birth vlogs on YouTube. And I've been doing that when like, I'm not like setting aside like, okay, I'm about to watch this for like three hours. But whenever I'm like cooking dinner or I'm folding laundry or like I'm on my lunch break alone at home, I will like pull up a video and watch it. And it's like 20 minutes or whatever. And those have been really helpful for understanding what to expect and like seeing the journey through like someone else's experience. And I will say some have been more helpful than others. And it's so cool because I'm not someone who watches YouTube. Like I'm a podcaster. Podcasting is like my jam. And so 
I'm not really like on YouTube much. So it's been really cool to see all these YouTubers who like vlogged their entire birth, which I cannot imagine doing, but like I have so much respect for them and like appreciation because I'm like, I'm getting so much out of this and getting to watch it. But it's been cool kind of getting into YouTube basically because of being pregnant and there's less podcast out there about pregnancy, I feel like, but a ton on YouTube about it. So if you're pregnant and like wanting really great like stuff from random people on birth and things, YouTube's a great place to go. So that's one thing I've been doing. And this next one, um, the last thing I'll talk about that I've been doing, it might sound really weird. So just bear with me, but I have been <laughs> intentionally visualizing the birth of this baby and how I will tell it later on. And I've been doing that like probably once a week or whenever I feel like it. So I came up with the idea of doing this because this is the same thing I do for all big things in my business. And I did an episode a while back where I talked about how I think visualization can play an important role in us growing our businesses. Um, that's been huge for me for my entire life. I'm a very like mental dream oriented person. Like I like to play out stories in my mind. And so whenever I have had like launches coming up and things like that, I will often go on a walk and think through, okay, what's it going to be like? And I'll visualize myself after the fact talking about it. And so I was like, I should try the same thing for birth. So I've been going on walks and visualizing the birth happening, but then it's easier for me to visualize it through thinking about me telling the story later on. So I'm thinking about, okay, it's already happened. How am I telling the story to someone? So I might think about it from like me telling the story to a friend or me telling it on this podcast even, because I do think I'll end up doing like a birth story episode after, after baby comes. And yeah, I visualize it all happening as I'm like telling it. And it's so funny because every time I do this, I, I think I've done it like three times so far, but every time it's a different story. Like I make up a different way. I go into labor a different way, like just different way everything goes down. And y'all, I might sound so crazy, but it has been fun for me and helpful for me. Just last night, Adam and I were on a walk after dinner and I was telling him about the birth story I came up with that day. And it's just really fun. And I think it's like, a fun creative outlet for me. And it also has shown me how little I know about labor. Cause like I'll be telling my own story and I'm like, well, I don't really know like what normally happens at this point. And so I've realized that that's one thing that's made me say like, I need to learn a lot about labor and delivery. Cause I actually don't know that much, but that's something that I think has been helpful for me. And you know, it's a proven thing that like visualizing the shot before you make it, so to speak is really important for like getting the results you're after. So anyway, I think that's been really fun for me. So those are some of the things I've been doing to prepare. And I'm going to talk more about what I've been doing when I do my second trimester episode coming up in a few weeks. And I also might do an episode after this baby comes just about um, all the things I've done to prepare because like the things I just said, it's like not even it. And I'm also like not halfway even through pregnancy yet. So I'm sure I'll do a lot more stuff. Okay, last two questions. So next one, hardest part of pregnancy. Hardest part has been the worrying. Um, there's just so much out of your control. And I am already kind of a worrisome person. And then that waiting period between when you find out you're pregnant and the first doctor's appointment where you get to like do an ultrasound, um, that felt like so long for me and also very worrisome. Um, we found out we were pregnant really quickly from when the like conception happened, so to speak. So I think it would have been helpful if I had found out more at like six weeks. Then it's like, okay, we only have to wait like three more weeks or something like that. But we found out when I was like literally like three and a half weeks or four weeks pregnant or something like that. So it was a, felt like a really long wait. And I didn't really have what I like was thinking was traditional pregnancy symptoms early on. Looking back, I'm like, I did have stuff that was feeling different, but I was like almost choosing not to notice them because I was so worried. So I just had a lot of fear that it might not be a viable pregnancy. And because of that, I struggled for a little while. I was like so excited, but then I struggled at the same time to like let myself get excited because I was afraid it could end. So like, I didn't want to put the due date on my calendar and like things like that. And I was like struggling to like plan my business around like the fact that I'd be having a baby this year. Like I was just like, I was in waiting mode and uh, it was scary. <laughs> and I know so many of you listening who've had children can absolutely relate to that. And my mom had a miscarriage before she had me. And we talked about that some at one point when I was already pregnant, but she didn't know I was pregnant yet. And I think that conversation, although she meant well and like was not trying to scare me, I think that contributed to like me feeling even more fearful, just like hearing 
that story for her and like so devastating listening to her talk about that. So anyway, I had a lot of fear. And so eventually, though, at some point, I mean, I would say like halfway through that waiting period, maybe I realized that I just had to trust God. Not that everything would go perfectly, but that whatever happened was part of his plan and I could handle it with him as my strength. Hopefully that makes sense. But it was like, I was like holding on to like, I need this all to go the way it's supposed to. But it was like, I had to surrender to like, this might not end the way I'm hoping it will. Like this pregnancy might not be viable. Like, I don't know. um, But I do know that I am capable of getting through that. And Adam's capable if that is what happens and everything would be okay. And I would have so much heartbreak, but like, I'll be okay. And I believed that God would like help me get through that. And there would be a purpose in it if that were the case and that I don't have to know how it all ends. So those were some things I just like wrestled with and came to. And so at some point at my appointment where like they did the ultrasound was at like nine and a half weeks. And so at some point in there, I came to that conclusion and I was able to start enjoying myself and getting excited. I actually told my mom I was pregnant before I had the first ultrasound appointment and told like a few other people. And I did end up you know, buying the Dear Baby book and some of that stuff and was like, okay, letting loose a little bit of like, okay, I'm going to let myself like truly get excited about this. And yeah, so worrying though. And it's something I've discovered in the worrying is like, I'm still worried just about new things. Like I, that one hurdle feel like, you know, I like leaped over it at that appointment, so to speak. But now there's other things. And the truth is, I think parenting is just worrying. <laughs> um, like you're always going to care so much about this human that you've brought into the world and hope that they're okay and safe. And so much of it is out of your control. So that's something that I feel like you kind of get thrown into in pregnancy, and then we'll continue like your whole life as a parent. So that's kind of um, my perspective on that. But that has been the hardest thing for sure. Um, Okay, last question, final question. I hope you guys have enjoyed this Q&A. This will be a really fast one. Um, People are asking how many children y'all want. So I think probably two to three kids. Adam and I both had one other sibling. So I was the oldest. I have a sister who's like pretty close in age to me. And then Adam was the youngest and has a brother who's like four years older. So we've always felt like we would want at least two kids. And I could see us having three. And I've also felt called for a while now to foster care and adoption. I've really felt that like tugging from the Lord. And Adam and I have talked about that quite a few times. And I think that could be a part of our family's story too at some point. So I look forward to like that being something we continue to explore. And I just think like foster care and adoption are so beautiful and yeah, have always felt like a calling towards that. So I think that's something that, yeah, we might see what happens there eventually. But I think like two to three kids is my thought. Okay. So that is it, you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little quick pregnancy Q&A. I was a little more long-winded than I thought I'd be on some of those. But yeah, that's how things are going. And again, the episode 107 is where we tell the story of how we found out and like kind of recapping the first trimester. And then a few weeks, I'm going to have an episode where I talk about how the second trimester has been and really cover a lot of stuff that I did not just talk about. So stay tuned for that. And then check out that first trimester blog post too. If you are like pregnant or trying to conceive and like want some of those links and are curious, I think that'll be a helpful resource for you. So I'll be back next week and the next week's topic will be a business one. And I look forward to talking to you then. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the podcast this week, friend. I appreciate you being here. And hey, if you enjoyed this episode, I want to tell you about something. I would encourage you to check out my website template shop. Over on elizabethmccravey.com, you'll find show it website templates and they are easy to use, strategically designed and created to help you book more clients and customers. Maybe your current website is really boring. I don't know, maybe it is and maybe you don't want to hurt its feelings, but you know it's true. And your website needs to be strategically and intentionally designed in order for it to convert your viewers into raving customers. And that's what these website templates do on MShop. These are pre-made website templates built for the Show It platform where you can plug and play your content into the template with ease and then get started with a website that is made to actually make you money. Isn't that what we all want, right? So go shop the templates at elizabethmccravey.com slash shop. That link is also in the show notes. And don't forget that you can actually subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening so that you never miss an episode. And I would so appreciate 
appreciate it if you left a rating and review for the show on Apple Podcasts or even just share it with a friend. It's a great way to support the show and then give us your feedback. So thanks so much for listening.